Hey, hey everybody, Nikki here, Black Dog Vintage and Antiques, and I don't do these all that often, but I found a really cool estate sale and I wanted to kind of show off and do a little bit of a haul of everything I picked up. So we will get to it. Okay, so let me start by saying I've been to a few estate sales and um, not many because they don't, we don't really have all that many up here. Um, this one was scary. It was a little scary. It's a little scary, uh, especially when you find out like that the person may have passed away and that and, like you, your mind starts to play tricks on you, I guess is what I should, I should say. Um, but the house was kind of a little bit on the hoarder side, um, not necessarily on the super, super duper, I'm going to be very neat side and it was dark and it was a little smelly inside. Um, so it was a little difficult to navigate. I had my, my little phone and I'm walking around looking for goodies. And when I first walked in, I saw, and this, this, this gentleman was a huge bird collector. He must've been a hunter back in the day. Cause he had all these, you know, wild turkey bottles and everything and lots of different birds, but he had a very big collection of owls, but he had one of these guys. Look at him. <laughs> Look at the ears on this guy. Okay. So this is an E and R crystal or Ealing and Roos or Reese. I'm probably saying that wrong. Uh, crystal, highly, highly polishing. Look at how smooth that is. Ooh, it's about this big. So that was one of the first things I picked up. Then we wanted, the house wasn't very big. It was a split kind of one level house. And on one side there was, uh, I guess the daughter-in-law and the son and the, the granddaughter living. And then the older gentleman lived in the other part of the house. And back in its day, this was a swank pad. I mean, they had this cool pool thing outside that was all built in and looked like a pond sitting right on the edge of the woods. It was really lovely, but there really wasn't a lot of space to move around. There were quite a few of us wandering around inside this. So we ended up in the basement and there's this corner shelf and the, you could tell all the stuff had been sitting there for a while because the shelves are all like bowed, you know, like look like little U's instead of little straight lines. And in there with my little flashlight, I see a few really awesome things that I kind of went, oh, hold on. I know what that is. So there was this whole stack and it was sitting just like this, just like this with this sitting on top of it. Now, silly me. I actually thought that I had the exact other one of these at home. Turns out it's slightly different. I see that now, but that's okay. I pretty much got this for almost, almost nothing. Uh, but let's, let's go through the little stack of uranium glass that I found. So this is Cambridge in a nice, beautiful piece of Cambridge. I don't think this was ever used. I think it literally probably just sat on that shelf its entire life. That's what I'm going with. So that was the first piece. That's the first section. Then more glowy. We got all of these, a set of four in really good condition. These guys right here, set of four of these guys. These are the, um, the luncheon plates, salad plates. Let me see, do I have my ruler? I do have my ruler. I found my ruler. Oh, I found my black light too. For those of you who watched Glass with Class last time, I lost my black plate. I found it. So these are the eight inch, all right, so these are eight inch plates, eight inch plates. And these are gonna be a little bit bigger then. All right, and then this next group, these are a set, another set of four, eight and a half inch plates. Now, I'm not sure, I think this might be, this is Decagon. That's the Decagon pattern by uh, Cambridge Glass. So I'm thinking, I have to look at my books. I haven't looked at my books yet. So I'm just showing this off because I was excited and I still had the light out when I got home. So I'm thinking these might be Decagon as well, which means these are Cambridge glass plates. And I got a set of four of these. Now the really funny thing is, is the glow on these guys. And she found a black light. All right. So the glow on these guys is there, but it's not quite as bright as the piece that's actually Mark Cambridge. And it's Mark Cambridge. You see, it has a little triangle with a C in it. That is Cambridge glass. See, look at the difference in the glow. Like, holy moly. And not quite as bright as, and I'm pretty sure these are anchor hawking. It's the anchor hawking. So it's a little bit paler of a glow, that uh, that other bit. So that's what I picked up at the estate sale. This is a handful of pieces um, from the estates. And I've gotten stuff from this gentleman before in his shop. He has a shop too. Um, 
for the man who ran the estate projects, uh, the estate projects, the estate sales. But then we wandered off and I went to finally one of my favorite thrift stores just reopened up. She was remodeling and I found really, really cool stuff there. So I found this piece of Indiana glass, carnival glass with the colors on this are just outrageous. And this baby, look at that. Look at that glow. That glow is insane. So this is the uh, open sugar. I don't know who needs this much, like, who needs this much sugar? I'm not sure. I'm sweet enough. I don't need any more sugar. But this is a sugar bowl. And I think it's, I think you turn this into a planter. It would be so cool, especially if you put it under a black light. It'd be so fun and funky. So I picked that up. I also picked up, where did I put them? Oh, they're over here. Also picked up, these are Gorum crystal from Germany. They're a cat salt and pepper shaker. I just thought they were so wild and they still have their little their little stoppers. But I think it's neat like if you peppers are obviously black so you can have one black cat, one white cat. I thought those were really really cool. My son's always complaining that I don't have a regular salt and pepper shaker. I just have one of those grinders. Um, and you would think with the salt and pepper shakers I've picked up over the past couple of years that I would have actually kept some. No. Although we do have a range McKee uh, black uh, depression glass salt and pepper shakers. I just don't use them because I'm afraid of anybody using them. Um, so moving on. I also picked up, look at this lovely cameo. Oh, let me see if I can get my camera to focus. We're going to work on this. I might have to just shoot a picture so you can see. It's a lovely lady holding a like ewer and it's not only a brooch, but it has a little bail. It's a very small bail, but you can, there we go. You can hang that and then I thought it was really pretty. I kind of really like, I don't pick up brooches all that often, but when I do. So I also picked up a bunch. She's my photo lady, and that's why I'm really glad she's open, because I'm in, like jonesing for some really good photos. And of course, John kidnapped a handful of them because I found early 1900s, so we're going to say 1900 to 1913, although I really think they're 1913 original New York Giants when the Giants played in New York and not in San Francisco from the polo grounds, pictures like on the field and stuff, which were super cool to find all these old baseball photos, but I found some other cool photos too. I had sleigh riding in the snow. Look at this. Oh my gosh. This lady is awesome. This is 1914. And it was, it actually has some writing on the back that I actually have to look into, but I love her. Look at, see, they're so happy. So for those of you who don't know, I do do a, um, and I, I love when they have this stuff written on the back. Over on Whatnot, I do an antique and eph ephemera and vintage ephemera sale every Thursday night. So look for some of these guys. Look at him. He looks like a JK, oh my God, I can't remember his name. Maybe it's JR, no JK. I don't know, he's an actor. He won an Academy Award for Drumline. No Drumline? I don't know, it was some drumming movie, can't remember. But he does the, um, the Allstate commercials. That's what he reminds me of. The, look, it looks like Granny's going to prison. It looks like Granny's going to prison. So it actually has her whole like date of birth and everything on the back too. So this was like 1930, I guess. And we've got, this is me. This is gonna be me when I'm older outside of my garden. That's what it's gonna look like. Yep. Yep. Not quite sure where that is, but it's really cool too. I love getting different shots. Nice city shot. And okay, I found a Teddy Roosevelt picture. A Teddy Roosevelt picture. Although this I believe is probably newer. The paper stock that it's on is probably a reprint. But still, it's Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt. Also picked up, this was neat. This was um, based on the 1950 census when Alaska became the 49th state. So this is a little wheel here and you turn this little wheel and it tells you when you can turn the wheel, I guess. All right, so here we go. We're in, we're in Louisiana. Okay, so the nickname, it gives you the nickname of the state, which is the Louisiana Pelican. It gives you the population, the capital, which is Baton Rouge, in case you didn't know, the flower, Magnolia. And they're noted for the sweet potatoes, sugar cane, cotton, and rice. Which I think that's really neat. And oh, wait, here's on the back, just for Claudia. This is Ohio, known as the Buckeye State. Capital Columbus. Uh, flower, the Scarlet Carnation. Ooh. Known for wheat, corn, rubber products, and livestock, and really cool glass. Hence, Cambridge glass. Pretty sure that's Ohio. Um, I also picked up, I'm, I'm a sucker for paper. I'll pick this up right here. This is Songs for Courts of Junior Maccabees with Suggested 
pep songs and yells. This is 1938 on this one out of Detroit, Michigan, known for its automobiles. And it just has lots of neat little songs and um, some graphics. There weren't a lot of graphics, but there were some. I'm looking to say, I think it may be just that first page. Oh, look, Oh Canada. Oh Canada. Because why not? But it's actually in really, really good shape. I mean, look at the spine on that. Even the corners are in really good shape. So I picked that up for ephemera. This was just fun. It is a little focacted up here at the top. But this is a Singer's Dressmaker's Guide. It's a whole magazine here put out by Singer's. And this was put out in 1947. My dad was born in 1947. So this is 76 years old. Um, and it has all sorts of like how to do... I guess if you're going to learn to sew, maybe I need to keep this because it keeps saying I need to learn to sew, but I guess I need a sewing machine. But it has all great little, I guess, tips and tricks on how to sew using your Singer sewing machine. I got, so I got that magazine. And then the last little bit that I wanted to show off with these, I love my, my trade cards. They're kind of my, my favorite, favorite, favorite thing that I've been doing lately and grabbing lately. So, oh, look. Riding a turtle. I don't know why we need a whip. I don't why do we need a whip? Somebody explained that one to me, but we have a whip. These are all blanks. Um, but I have a couple others that are like these that are actually made for Magnolia Ham out of Kentucky. Look at oh, look at the little baby in the nest. Oh my god, so cute. So cute. These are so so these have gold backings. Oh, look at the little baby's playing the pan flute and he's got birds coming to him. Um, they all have the gold foil in the background, and they're all these adorable little cherub-esque little, like, Ann Geddes babies, which I think are adorable. I have another one that's exact same copy of this, but it has, like, the magnolia hands on the front and the back, but I love the little duck shoe. Sometimes I like them when they're blanks, just like that much better, like that much better. Oh, and where's that other piece? Hold on, I have one more piece. Okay, I found it. I got this at the estate sale as well. It was sitting with all of the uranium glass and that one candle holder. And this was just kind of laying on its side. But I cannot believe the condition this egg coddler is in. So this is Royal Worcestershire. So it has a pink rose on one side. And then it's got the blue kind of, I don't know, it almost reminds me of a strawberry flower, but just not quite. Um, so this is called the June Garland pattern. And they open up. And from what I understand, I've never actually used one of these. You put an egg in here, raw egg in here. You put the little lid on. And they go in kind of like a, I don't know if they go in the steam bath or they go in the oven. I don't think they go in the microwave. But, and then you open it up and you eat your, your, your egg. You eat your egg out of there. It's actually never been used. I don't think ever, ever been used. And it's in really good, really, really good condition. I was so jealous. The gentleman in front of me who was checking out right in front of me in the estate sale he had managed to find and pick up and was hemming and hawing over picking up two sets of antique handcuffs like houdini style like antique handcuffs and uh, the, the estate manager was like well they're, making, they're gonna be like a hundred dollars a piece and i went well that's really a fair price but i ain't got no hundred dollars to spend on handcuffs <laughs> but they were super super cool um, I really, really liked them and it was just nice to kind of see some of that stuff, you know, most of the stuff that was papery had been kind of like sitting around too long and was maybe a little bit chewed on by critters. So we ignored all that stuff and I did find, oh, I found my, my grail of Pyrex, but I really didn't like the condition of it. So I put it down. I really didn't think that the rust stains, like those orangey rust stains, were going to come out. I found the black snowflake pattern nine and a half inch casserole veggie dish and I wanted it but I said oh it's going to take more elbow grease than I'm willing to invest in this piece to keep and judging by the state of things I wasn't putting it through my dishwasher either because we don't do that with Pyrex we don't, we don't do that with Pyrex so I left it I did I left it but it was it was still really neat it was still really neat 
So that's everything that I found. I just thought I'd share. It's a small little baby, baby haul. Um, the glass will slowly be working its way in through my glass with class sale that I do with Claudia. Um, the ephemera will be in my ephemera sales that I do over on whatnot. Um, but if there's anything that you see in the haul that you are really, really, really interested in that you would like, you can, you know, shoot me a, a, an email or leave me a message or DM me or whatever. We can work on something. We can work something out. Um, but that, yeah, that's it guys. That's it. So I hope to see you cause I'm doing this instead of like, like what's up for sale on Monday. I hope to see you on Monday's glass with class sale over on Claudia K vintages channel. Um, we're going to be discussing Emberina and Marina this Monday. And, um, I have something else to tell you guys about that. Don't worry. It'll come to me. Shh, I'm thinking. Oh, I know what it was. I'm going to be having lots and lots of rainbow colored glass this month. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to do one piece from the Roy G. Biv of the rainbow to kind of celebrate Pride Month. So make sure you pop by and watch them on the rewind, guys. Watch them on the rewind because sometimes the stuff is still available and we are more than happy to sell after the fact as well, both Claudia and I. Both of us seem to have made out like bandits on the clear glass thing. I will say that recently. Um, so until next time, everybody, thank you for hanging out with me. Make sure you tune into the shows to see all the cool stuff we're bringing and come and learn a little something and stay swanky and stay classy.